Okay, 6.30 p.m. Uh, yeah. Uh, See? Let That's me all start. We used to right? start meeting at 6.30, so I get one, uh, I thought. one pass, right? 6 p.m. Yeah, not the Toner Roll, right? <laughs> Tuesday, September 10th, 6 p.m., Toner Grand Rapids, Missile Court, Missile Building. We'll, uh, Jim Diane will come together and open at this moment. There we go. First item on our agenda is to approve the minutes of the April 12, 2013 town board. Any questions on those, folks? I'll approve the August 13th instead of the April. I'll second that. Is that what I said, April? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. There was a second. Yes. All in favor, signify by saying it. Aye. 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 All right, we go to the public common area. Comment portion of the meeting. People wishing to address the item will be limited to two minutes each. Uh, public comment limited to a total of 30 minutes. Uh, as different as to the last meeting, you may stay in your seat or rise from your seat. You do not need to move to the podium. If you wish to speak, please uh, announce your name to the board members and rise. Yes, sir. Yes. Is this the only opportunity for public comment, or do you want it under the actual item? Uh, this is the portion that you have for public comment, yes. Okay. So go ahead and speak to it if you wish. Go ahead. I'm Mike Springer, and I'd like to address item eight on the agenda. Um, I was at the legislative committee meeting, as many of you know, last week, and, and uh, afterward had a nice discussion with some, a couple of the board members and some safety folks, which I thought was worthwhile. But uh, after that meeting, I. I went out in the township and was paying attention to uh, the number of fire numbers that were were visible, the ones that weren't. And it seemed to me like that there was a majority that were in compliance. The majority of those addresses that you could see, whether you were in subdivisions or uh, out in more rural areas like on Griffith 48. And I guess I, I'd like to urge the board to give longer consideration to what we're doing here. Uh, if a vast, I would say at least two thirds to three quarters of what I saw were in compliance. And it would seem unfair to me to cause an expense for the 75% that are in compliance because of the 25 that are not. It may be more worthwhile for us to urge the ones that are not compliant to do so. I talked to a number of folks over the weekend as well that found they weren't in compliance, but said, you know, if somebody would have reminded me, I'd have put new numbers up. And I think it's just something you get used to when you go into your home every day. Um, the second point I wanted to make is that in, in doing the calculations on this uh, mandated numbering system, it looks like it's going to be over $100,000 plus the installation costs. And these economic times, regardless of where you live, $100,000 is a lot of money to take out of the township. And I guess to look to folks to spend that kind of money to create safety for some folks that might comply if they were just asked to, um, seems to me to be unnecessary. And I guess the, the last point, even if we did go ahead with this mandatory numbering system, placing the numbers in each yard, that's no guarantee of continued compliance. The day afterward, things will look fine. Whether they're red, blue, or black signs, they'll look good right away. But someone said last week that the life expectancy is 10 years. And I would argue that the folks that are not in compliance now will likely be not be in compliance down the road, their signs will be rusty, fallen over, and an eyesore for the town. And when we're trying to bring folks to our community, I think that would have a negative impact. So I'd just like you to consider those points before you make your decision. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm Jeannie Fairman, and I also would like to speak on issue number, or item number eight. I guess I am um, in favor uh, from a safety standpoint to us having that ordinance. I, I did a little bit of traveling during this last summer. I was up in Manitouche Waters, happened to talk to uh, a, fire, a volunteer fire department in, in the town of Manitouche, uh, town of Bradley, and I think that they have had it in place for well over a year in, in both communities. And it is definitely an asset for firefighters. Um, they explained to me that very often they have volunteer fire, all of them are volunteer in those two departments, saying that they have young kids coming, or young men and women, I should say, coming in, joining the department, who are not familiar with the area, and it you definitely zero in and you know. So if there's a new road, new subdivision, 
uh, like in my subdivision, we all have house numbers, but I don't know how visible they'd be for a firefighter coming in trying to locate 3211. I mean, you'd have to have a light to distinguish which house was which house. If, in addition to that, if the board decides not to have a, a ordinance in place, I wish that you would at least set some standards for those of us that would like to have one. Um, I'm willing to pay for it. I think they run around $35. I think I could have someone install it or install it myself. Because if I want to make that 9-11 call, I want to make sure that someone's there. So for me, I think it's an important issue. Thank you. Anybody else? Lance? Mr. Chairman, I guess I would kind of reiterate what Mr. Springer stated. We are generally a, a continuation of the city of Wisconsin Rapids based on you know, the population density that we have. Uh, my concern also is that we make this look way worse than it is, and I, I can tell you from experience, I had the conversation with our emergency management office. Um, there may have been an isolated incident, but there has not been any consistent problem finding or locating addresses, and that was with the direct communication with the director of emergency management. Yes, she said we're probably solving a problem that doesn't exist. Um, but you know, this is you know more its consideration. But I, I think that I. I guess what I've heard from the people that call me is take some time to look at it before you jump in. Thank you. Go ahead. Shirley? Yeah, I too, of course, am against this. Um, I guess also I'm confused. I thought this was good, going to, uh, at the legislative committee meeting, this was the, the attorney was going to look at the Wood County ordinance. And I was surprised to see this on, on the agenda tonight. So, um, I, I, I too don't think we need this. Um, so um, I, would, I would hope that uh, the board would reconsider. I think we've got more pressing issues than, than having to deal with this. Right. Um, I'm Dawn Springer. Um, I would, you know, Jeannie, I appreciate your uh, uh, in favor of the ordinance and whatnot, but I think you should leave it up to each individual person. You already have an ordinance in place that's pretty specific as to what you should put outside. And if you so choose to put larger, like our house has larger numbers than what the ordinance says, I think enforcing the present ordinance would take care of the 911 calls. If you make your home have the numbers how you would choose to have them, not how you're going to put the little black and white sign in my front yard to the post. Um, just tell the people their choices and enforce what you have in place already. Thank you. Who else? Ron. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name's Ron Hatt. Um, I guess I, in, in general, I'm not in favor of these fire numbers, but when I'm trying to get along, I guess I can certainly see a, a, a need for them. Uh, but uh, I'm holding the draft ordinance here as prepared by the safety committee, I believe, it was, and it's pretty restrictive. Uh, you give me, you know, I don't want this thing sitting in front of my where, where it's proposed. You're, if you're asking me to put it in my front yard, give me a little bit more flexibility of where to place the thing. And, and uh, you know, don't, don't make me go to get somebody's permission to do it because I'm just causing them some problems. Uh, start out with the ordinance the way you got it. Uh, allow me, at my discretion, to move it to a different location. Uh, kind of a two-part ordinance. And... Uh, Hey, you know, it's money. Uh, I'm lucky. I can afford it, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, number one, I just still not have them. Number two, if, you, if, if, if we got to have them, I'd appreciate some flexibility on the placement. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Any, any items? Go ahead. Bring them back. Jeff Tyberg. Um, last time when the legislative committee talked about this, they basically said, the reason they have to do this is because you're not enforcing the current ordinance. So what you're saying is you're punishing all of us who are up to code for the ones that aren't up to code. That, um, that's a Soviet kind of uh, tactic to punish the community for what a couple people aren't doing. So to me, the board has been remiss in upholding the ordinance that we've got. Do your job get the people up the code with the ordinance and then we don't have to worry about those of us who don't want these other signs. So Thank you. that's my point. Anybody else? Go ahead. Dave Keywalk. I'm 
just looking at the town, it seems like they're doing a lot of things with the ordinances. And I don't know if they're just bringing them up to date. It sounded like a couple of them were very old and they were being up to date. Well, I'm also against the address signs. I am in compliance with the town's regulation right now with it, having a reflective sign, the correct size. It's above my garage, it's easily seen from the road. I agree that there are people that are not in compliance, and I guess I'm kind of curious if the town's considering hiring an ordinance officer to go around and enforce all these things once it's done. As others have said that once the signs are up, initially they'll all be right, but what happens when people start having to fall down or to get bent over or whatnot, then, then you're back to where you are now with some that might not be in compliance. Is somebody going to go around and check all these homes again at a certain point in time again? Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other folks wishing to speak on, on any of the issues? One more time, anybody wishing to speak on any of the other issues? Hearing none, it's uh, 12 minutes past uh, 6 o'clock. We'll then go to the regular items on the on the board. First item will be the month reports from the fire department. Uh, Don Bone Fire Chief is in training right now. They are meeting uh, with the Barron Mill with several departments to uh, go over safety uh, work in the Barron Mill, so you will not have a report to us tonight. Uh, do you have a captain? Yep. Go ahead, please read this report then. We are currently staffed with 53 fire EMS members, six EMS only members, total of 20 members trained to do EMS in the department. We are currently looking for members for fire and EMS. If you are interested in our community, in the communities we service for fire or EMS, please stop by the fire station and see Chief Bone. Um, all department vehicles are in service, uh, ladder one, except ladder one, which should be back this week. Um, since the last report, the department responded to 29 calls for service, which were 18 EMS calls, four grass fire, one gas leak, one mutual, no, M MVA. What's MVA? Motor vehicle accident. Motor vehicle accident. Motor vehicle accident, okay. Three structure fires. Monthly department training, uh, RIT trained at the Wisconsin Rapper Training House. EMS is training or have trained the firefighter rehab and RRV driving. And fire will be training on the 25th at Mid State Training Towers. And he's got 916 Mariani Foods. Um, yeah, that training, from what I understand, is uh, it's a joint training between Wisconsin With Rapids, Rapids yeah, yeah. mutual aid, and they wish to see how much water that we would be able to pump with our portable pumping system. Because the city's fire hydrants capacity is not deemed to be possibly enough for it, so they've asked us to come in with all of our equipment, which is cons which we also have a submersible large pump and we'll see how much water we can actually pump for that facility to help them with their fire protection plan. Obviously, it's close to us. We would know that we would be called in case there was any fire at that facility. So that's what that training is all about. Okay. Uh, we did have a real large fire this uh, last weekend that we were involved in. Dan, did you want to comment on any of that? Yeah. Uh, we actually had two of them. Um, we had one on Saturday, which was a significant wildfire. Uh, was a mutual aid. Um, we were called first. Um, Rome was there, Nakusa was there, Big Flats was there. Um, very, came in about 10.30 in the morning. We didn't leave there until 7, I think I believe it was 7 o'clock that night. Um, was run very well. That fire was very difficult to get to. Um, I just want to commend Don and Bob, uh, Pye and Mark Ruchard chief and assistant chiefs for how they handled that. Um, there was a lot of issues that arose, not only water, but um, just getting to it. And between the DNR and coordinating with the other departments, they did a phenomenal job in handling that. And then last, I believe it was a week ago, Monday, we had a structure fire out on Ranger Road. Um, got there, it was fully engulfed there again. Um, the way that task was handled was, was just just awesome. I and mean, I've worked for five five or six chiefs now. I was trying to count on the way here. I was running a little late. And um, 
and those guys did a, just a super job out there. Should be commended for it. All right. Any other any questions from the the on the fire chief's report? Yes, I just have a question on this particular fire. When the firefighters were out there all day fighting, how much did the volunteers make for that? That's a fifteen dollar payday for them. Yep. So they fought all day for fifteen dollars. Yeah, but they got uh, uh, hot dogs. No, they got uh, <laughs> peanut, but peanut butter sandwiches from the DNR. And then I cooked uh, probably uh, 40 pounds of uh, barbecue in the fire department building that was fed to uh, them as they came back or they came in for relief uh, to, to go back to their regular jobs. And we also had uh, a village or the, you know, the village of Port Edwards, no, town of Port Edwards fire truck manning our station along with two pumper pumper tankers from uh, Rudolph sat in our station all that time waiting to cover the town in case there was any other thing because we literally had every piece of equipment from our barn gone out to that fire. Pretty amazing. Thank you. Anything else? All right. Uh, no, any sitting on the safety report? Nope. No injuries. No issues. No injuries. We love those. Uh, Sergeant Dave Drinkwine, what do you got on the police report for us today? Hello. And I'm giving you the report. Um, I'm just going to talk about a couple different things. Um, the auxiliary has been really busy and they've been involved with the car care, car fit at Mid State. Um, there's a run this weekend around Lake Wasicha, along with the world record attempt by the skiers from around the area of Madison. Um, get us book world records. People will be here. Big weights from Evan Rude will be here in support of that. Um, just a quick note on that, I did post today that we'll be closing the lake down for that entire day because they need the full length of it for safety reasons. Um, there's a bunch of other restrictions that they have to do as far as they have to put buoys so far down the lake. Um, we shut off the whole lake as of 12.01 a.m. on Saturday and it'll be reopened on 6 o'clock. Um, touch on the, the laptops. We're still having issues. We're down one laptop for the squads right now. Um, two of them that we're currently using are really old and we're having issues with them staying connected with the internet and stuff through the air cards. Um, from what um, John Gathers and his crew has determined that they're to the point where they really can't do anything more for them. Two laptops, they're so old and they can't. It's just, as he put it, you guys are wasting money having him come and try to get them because they're so old, they just won't upgrade anymore. Okay. Um, I just want to put out a safety deal that there's a lot of people walking around and riding bicycles yet. Please watch them so you don't hit them because a lot of them uh, don't wear reflective clothing. There's some that do, but some, a lot of them don't. Um, I've been noticing there's a lot more of the elderly using their electrical vehicles running around town, which I need to look at. Uh, it's kind of a fine gray area, there's not a lot of information on if they can ride on public streets or not. So I wanted to look into some more of that. Um, the department is very busy. We've had a lot of burglaries in various different cases, um, all the way into um, someone trying to commit suicide with a firearm. So it's been very busy for us. Um, just to let everybody know, we do have a Facebook account, and we're going to start utilizing and putting information on there on cases that we're working on, or just updates. Um, one of the examples is we're going to start putting the, um, the stats from each month on there. Um, I know Wisconsin Rapids does that. We're going to start utilizing it more um, for information to give out to the, the public. So um, that's about it for now. Any questions? I was here uh, Saturday to watch the, some of the auxiliary and Tammy uh, taking pills out of the receiving area where we got where people can bring in old pills to us we can safely just uh, take them and dispose them and this was just a four month period of time in that garbage sack I could not believe how many pills were in there so yeah. I, we just want to encourage people to bring those into us we like to get them safely disposed of rather than gone into the sewer systems and into our soils be sure you bring them back to the town we will get them safely disposed of yeah. any other questions of the uh, sergeant 
I guess I have um, one. I was curious, what is the lifespan of the laptops that you were talking about? Um, in talking with um, where we get our, our computers from and with John Gathers, um, four years is, is pushing it. Um, typically, the larger departments are replacing between three and four years, or when they rotate their squads, they get new computers. So, and I, I can't say for certainty how old ours are. Um, I know that the previous chief said that they got them way back, so I don't know what that means. I haven't found any information on when we bought them. Yeah, so. any kind of listing of cereals or when they were bought or anything either. There's one question in the back. And you mentioned bikers and walkers. Mm -hmm. In driving around, I notice a ton of people bike against traffic and walk with traffic. Is this a growing problem or is it just this area people just don't know? It's growing everywhere. Okay. Um, where I came from up north, the city provided bicycle safety, like class seminar type thing, and they actually put on bike rodeos for the K through, not K, but the second and third graders and higher and taught them that type of stuff. Parents were encouraged to attend it. Um, it's the parents. You see the parents with their kids riding bicycles on the wrong side of the road. It's amazing how many people, <laughs> it's, it's amazing how many people don't know the right etiquette to do it. Um, we're constantly talking to them. So it's it's a work in progress. Yeah. So Sometimes I'd love to be an undercover agent. <laughs> Do you know when they're going to attempt that world record? I mean, is there, is there a time? I know it's the 14th, but I don't know the exact they time. Got the whole I day actually do know that because I called that gentleman just today to ask him because I have friends coming in from out of town. And he left me a voicemail message saying the first attempt will be between 9.30 and 10 o'clock. Oh, right away? So it'll be right away in the morning. Okay. And if they don't make that one, if somebody falls, they're going to continue it all day long. Trying to if they do make, make it, they're going to try again with more. With more. Boy, they, they've got a, <laughs> they're going to try to It should be a good day. Yeah. If they know make it the first time, then they got 50 ropes to straighten back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else for Dave? The 14th, you said? Correct. Yes, Saturday. 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 Thank you. After you go to Choose to Reuse, you sneak over there. Right. And, and Bill will bring you update on Choose to Reuse or Patty, one of the other. Okay, uh, item number four we're on then, correct? Proof Class B liquor license for Bulldog LLC agent Ron Brzezuski. Yep, 2410 Chestnut Street. Property is located at 4010 Clover Road. And this was uh, just one more? Is that the name that it they're going by or are they changing? one more that's being changed to new owners, correct? Okay. And background checks have been done on everybody, and everybody is fine on background checks and I'll make other a codes. Is the, is the building in compliance with the fire department? That did is checked yeah. when it was just one more, so, mm -hmm. yep. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the Class B liquor license for Bulldog LLC. I'll second it. Motion, Kathy, second, Dan. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify saying aye. Aye. I'm an aye. <coughs> Move to item five, which is a approval of Class B liquor license for now Sapphire Incorporated, changing changing the corporate officers. This was before us just recently. It's like changing officers, and that's why it needs to come back. And again, the background check we're done on the new officers, and everything is fine. Tell me the motion. Motion, Dan. Second it. Second, Patty. To approve, I assume there was. Yeah. Any further discussions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Item six is a resolution 20 13 uh, 30 in support of the Pavaluski development, LLC harvesting, controlling of the evasive and native lake weeds in Nepco Lake. Uh, we were asked if we would support it, and uh, we have a slight resolution, and uh, Judy, would you read that, please? Harvesting control of evasive and native lake weeds in Nepco Lake. The town board of the town of Grand Rapids, Wood County, Wisconsin, re resolves as follows. That the town of Grand Rapids does hereby support Pavlovsky Development, LLC, 
and Nepco Lake Owners Association Incorporated in the harvesting and control of invasive and native lake weeds within Nepco Lake for the improvement of recreation, fish habitat, and water quality. Is there any discussion on that? Um, I have. What kind of plan do they have um, for this? Yeah, there isn't any plan. No. So how can we approve a resolution if there's no plan to? Our, our attorney uh, encourages not to specifically indicate a plan how it would to, was to take place because I believe the DNR would regulate how that is to take place. Is that correct? Let me explain. Go sure. ahead, please. Well, they've been harvesting weeds on Nepco Lake since 1964, and we still run the same weed harvester, but now we bought more because that one just isn't enough. And we applied this spring for a weed harvesting permit, and I just I got a lot going on. I just assumed that everything was back and we were good to go, and um, and then in fact, Scott Provost at the DNR is, is like, no, actually, I haven't even given nothing with it yet. So a few days later, he got back to me, and he actually denied the permit for the entire east side, and then on the west side, he only let, let us harvest in certain areas. And what he wants us to do, and he said Arrowhead can watch, or what all those places have done it, he wants us to do a lake study, you know, basically a whole study of the lake, and the DNR already did themselves, I think it was last summer, was before, they already did the main part of the study where you go out and you sample and um, so on. But the bottom line is, is he wants us to do the lake study because of the milfoil. You know, there's a lot of milfoil on the lake, and that's when you drive by and it looks really bad, you're, you're seeing the milfoil. I mean, it's been on the lake since the early 90s. It's just, I don't know, it seems like when it gets hot, it really, you can really see it, you know, on. Um, but he wants us to do the lake study to, you know, understand why the lakes, you know, why the weeds are there, I think. You know, it's a whole long, it's like a $30,000 process that we're going to have to go through. And then, but I think at the end of the day, they're going to, the DNR is going to prove the actual killing of the, of the milk Because you can't cut it. In the area of sure they actually do cut it. But you're really not supposed to. Because when you cut it, it's spread. But in order to use the chemical to kill it, and the DNR will approve it, you have to go through the leak study and all that kind of stuff. So that we don't really need the support of the town. And I mean, town Grant, Thomas Airtoga approved it, Billy Roberts approved it, but we just think it looks better that, hey, it's just not the capitalist pig developer, you know, looking to fill his pockets. It's like, no, the, the, the lake. Yeah, you talk to the Muskie Club, and they're like, no, they, nobody's hardly even fishing right now because of the weeds. Yeah, you can fish right away in the spring, and it got, it got really bad about three weeks ago to the point where, in this case, I'll be casting for muskies constantly because there are big muskies on that lake. But it's pretty hard right now to find places where the weeds are not growing. That's the issue. And if we want to do anything at all to the east side of the lake, we have to do this lake study first. We just think it looks better. You know, the lake study we have to pay for either way. We're not asking for anybody's money, but we have to pay for that. But then we go to apply next year and we show Scott, hey, it's not just the Lip the Lake Homeowners Association, it's the whole it's the whole community that, that's in support of this. It may maybe Scott doesn't care, I don't know. We just think it looks better. All right, Bill, you had your hand up? Yes. Um, on June 12, 2013, you requested the permit for Scott Prohl. Okay. And, um, you know, you know, this is the only lake in the area. Every one of Portage County lakes, every lake here has had a lake management study on it. I, I'm a part of the um, RCND, which is the Golden Sands Resource Conservation Congress okay. Council. And um, I, I talked to Amy Thorson on this, and also I talked to... Uh, our, our land conservation person and Scott Provost on it. And I have all this stuff on it. I, I, th their concern is, and you know, Wood County itself has the park on it. And, and they would like, I would like a very clean lake and everything. But, you know, my, my, my advice is the fact that I, I think we're opening up the door here. I, I, you know, this resolution, I believe, could just skip your name and it would be what everybody wants. 
actually is a it's a good clean water lake done properly and i just think we're opening up the door here for any development or any group or organization that wants to do something to get the permission of the town we can't really give you the permission that's my thoughts any other comments did you um, speak to our attorney in regards to this resolution, did you say? Yeah, we have some... I, I sent the, the resolution which the Pavelskis have, have provided to Dan and asked him his opinion. And the, the only thing that they had is, they had, does hereby approve and support. And Dan said, the town does not have the authority to approve anything. So he suggested that we take the approve out. Okay. So we are supporting them in their efforts, efforts to get a permit is the only thing that the resolution is doing. So that was Dan's comments. Because the lake is almost entirely in the village board efforts. Yep. I mean, Grand, Rap Grand Rapids is just... I mean, just that one little section where we hope to have a bunch of homes someday. I mean, it's well, it's, it's, as far as the actual water is concerned, it's just a tiny, tiny amount. Yeah. I mean, almost all of it is the village of whatever it's. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2013-30 as presented. I'll second it. It's a motion by Kathy, seconded by Dan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I'm an aye. Any opposed? Nay. You want to post bill? Thank you. Thank you. I'll get you a copy, Mail. Okay, item uh, 10 discuss drafting policy to have consistent. Seven. Seven. Well, I, I checked Where nine. You I checked <laughs> nine off for a purpose. Somebody was talking about it, so now I want to jump to it again. I need one of those uh, teleprompters. Okay. Yeah. Seven. Discuss giving Kellner Knight's approval for non use of non developed road right of way in the south end of 76th Street between South Circle Drive and Grove Avenue for Snowmobile Trail. They asked us for that last year. Is there the representatives from them here tonight? Do you want to speak to the reason why you're asking for that? Well, currently, uh, my name is Dan Gook. I'm the president for the Kellner Knights. Uh, Currently, uh, the, uh, the trail system that uh, comes across Wazicha and continues north where, uh, where this crossing is at Grove uh, Avenue um, basically goes through someone's uh, private property right there behind the garage, kind of close quarters and continues to a ditch to the 76th Street that's mentioned in, on its way to cross W actually. That's a state corridor for the for the Wood, uh, not only for Wood County, but for the entire state. And our goal would be is to, uh, the, the, the property changed hands. And uh, our goal would be is to just try to put a better footprint and keep off of any uh, private land if we can. And this would be utilizing some township property, uh, using the right of way that's actually not being utilized right now, a uh, street that doesn't come through all the way. And, uh, uh, trying to be a better member of the community there. So that's the reason behind it. Um, last year, um, we just weren't able to follow through in time to get probably all of the material to you. And um, well, for what it's worth, one of our club members uh, became ill that was working on it too. So it kind of fell through the, the for there for a little bit on the planning on our side. So. No, um, and in the meantime, I was contacted by the people, the family that was dealing with the property on Grove. That's uh, where the trail crosses right now. Uh, there's a ditch on the, uh, on the north between uh, on the northern edge of that property leading up to W. That uh, basically is a ditch, and in the old days, the the older, smaller grooming equipment would fit through there. Well, today it doesn't. Um, it's passable. Uh, grooming equipment can make it, but they can't do anything with the trail because of it's the ditch and the, the drag is wider than the ditches, so it just rides on top. But so we would be we would be utilizing uh, staying off of a couple of different pieces of private property and uh, staying on township property 
and uh, utilizing land there that uh, would be that, that, that through fair that we're talking about on 76th Street. So. Any uh, questions on it, William? Uh, at the last um, year when this was proposed, uh, the police chief at that time said that he thought we should cable this or, or get further information. He thought we should have heard from the landowners, and uh, I, I, I did call some of them and, and told them this was on the agenda, and and they had no comment. So I, I don't know if you contact if they contacted the landowners in this area or not. At this time, we didn't. Uh, dimensions wise, I think the, the right of way is 66 feet. Um, after talking to a few of the town folk, um, like Rick Austin, I believe, on the crew, maybe an 18 foot path, which would leave 24 feet of uh, woods on each side, just to be a buffer and kind of respect those neighbors on each side of that through fair. Um, the, the club also is willing to put you know, more signage and whatnot. Uh, between speed limit and quietness, uh, loitering can to keep people from any motorists from you know, being a distraction in that area and try to pass through that area as quickly as they can. That is a uh, that's a tough a tough spot for us being in a I don't want to say a metro area, but where the trail system comes through a lot of residential area. Uh, obviously, very common up north where that's the culture is just part of what they they live that culture every day the snowmobiling community is just it's a big deal uh, for here um, that's our goal is is to try to eliminate the private property we run on now and try to try to stay away from that the most we can so we were hoping that would be a better alternative we do have some other pieces like uh, on the south side of the lake on 75th street where we do pass on uh, on the shoulder of the road or the, in the ditch and the right of way there uh, this would be the exact same uh, uh, scenario uh, on 76th Street here on the north side of Wazicha where we're talking about uh, we would stay to one side and, and actually we'd be fortunate enough there'd only be one driveway we'd even have to cross and it's not a blacktop driveway either. Uh, and uh, that would continue on right up to where the, where the trail meets right now near the stop sign. So those are pictures of where so, Dan so was to answer talking my about. Question, you didn't contact the landowners this year. We did not. No. No. Mr. The only yeah. question I have is if they cut the 18 foot path on the on un open right away. Open right away. Um, how will that prohibit the vehicles from perhaps using that in the summer? Uh, will you put a yeah. folder there or something? Or? Okay, uh, we would do like we do on the other parts of uh, uh, take out like on Woodrock here, um, put gates, you know, big, big farm gates up there with the trail close signs on there. Um, so I mean, it's virtually impossible to drive around. Um, Basically, you know, prohibit so. the prohibit the access for that piece uh, when the trails aren't open. And that's, the gates wouldn't be open unless trails are open, so. Right, I was more concerned with in the summer, if some oh, right. vehicle sees that, yeah. you might think it's a good shortcut to go through, yeah. eventually become a vehicle. We, we would yeah. install gates at our cost, just like uh, we do in other parts of the town. I'll make motion to approve the request. I'll second uh, Motion by Bill, second by Kathy. Any further discussion? The, the only one thing that I that I uh, wanted to note on it that this town has looked at this road in the past and it is somewhere down the town's plans to reopen this road because it would make better services for fire and EMS depending on where we're coming from. It's just a small road and then someday it's likely to become an open town road. So you say we don't collect gas tax on it now. Uh, we do not. It's it's un it's unopened. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, say goodbye by saying aye. Aye. Have an aye. Any opposed? All right. That was seven. Eh? That's correct. All right. Moving to item number eight: discuss drafting and publishing request for proposal for purchase and installation of 
9911 reflective emergency signs. I want to make some, a comment first. Uh, Patty, first of all, thanks for providing that document to us that indicated that the county has an ordinance in place already. I just this afternoon met with our attorney and he did confirm to us that our ordinance that we have is unenforceable. He says the county ordinance trump, trumps the town's ordinance because it was tested in a couple of court cases, Liberty, Township versus whatever. So uh, the long and short of it, I, I would be moving to drop this and then I would ask uh, Supervisor Clendenning because he's on the county board to find out what the county's plan is if they're going to enforce this, their ordinance or if they are not going to enforce the ordinance because it appears to be in their ordinance there's an enforcement piece. So that's uh, where I think we need to go now. I don't believe our ordinances would hold up. I would uh, not fire off at all. So I would be moving to uh, uh, table that item. I will second your motion. Motion been made and second at the table. Any further discussion? Hearing none, motion is tabled. I guess I didn't need a discussion on table. All right, so we are not moving ahead. Second at the table. Uh, hearing no discussion, all in favor say by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'm an aye, by the way. All right. Motion is carried. Five to zip. Item nine. Discuss purchase of cul de sac and balsam circle by the town. It's a circle that we looked at uh, earlier this year on our rounds. Uh, it is potentially coming available to us if we want to go ahead and pursue it. We have not negotiated a price or anything, but I believe the assessment on it is $100. Yes. yes. So if the uh, board wishes us to go ahead, I'd like a motion for us to go ahead, and then we'll uh, have our attorney work through the process of trying to purchase it. Bring right. it back with the price before final? Right. Any discussions? Um, what kind of condition is the black tap currently? Very poor. That was that's the, that was that that was the one, one that we were in that's going to need to have a, okay. a rebuild. All so right. those trees would come down and then we would uh, uh, make room for a, a proper circle so that the uh, the trucks and whatever the garbage trucks that go in there can get in and out of that's That cul de sac is, was in a less than uh, pristine. Condition. And that had, uh, excuse me, that, that had the trees? Right, and that had the, the trees in the middle. That had the sunken areas where we had apparently stuff buried in it in yep. the past. Okay. William. Um, yes, um, so so we're declaring this as used for roads because the town cannot purchase or sell property unless they have a, a need for roads. Highway need. Highway need. And unless they have a special town meeting and the electors decide whether you sell property or purchase it. But since we plan on turning this into highway use, we don't need a special meeting. That is correct. Okay, and, and, in, and, and in learning that and talking to the Towns Association, they can't understand that this, they cannot understand that somebody could buy a cul-de-sac or own a, they wonder how many of these we really had in the town. And I, I see in this one we have a couple of them. I believe that's the only subdivision where there is any left that somebody held a right. And I'll bought. Mm -hmm. I'll bought. Mm -hmm. We bought a couple of those in the past already, but good. So <laughs> we, does this bring any road aid to if we purchase no. okay. I No, that would be nice, but I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. If if a motion is made by you to approve it could a limit be put on it, a price limit that, you know, up to a certain amount that if somebody negotiates with this gentleman and... The only, the only thing about that you typically don't like to just 
put your hand on the table That's and true. tell what, what we're willing to do. I think we need an okay. offer from him, what he's willing to sell it to us for, and then we would need to discuss that in closed session. As I recall, no? Yes, Rick Solomon said he wouldn't pay nothing for it and he would have him recording the deed. Because the deed, recording the deed is probably worth more than the property is. So he said if the guy wants to give it to the town, fine, but he's got to record the deed. I, I think there's a lot more to this than just that. Well, what could that be? I don't know. Is the issue at hand here, though, whether we want to pursue negotiating with him, whether negotiating means exactly as you described, Bill, or whether negotiating means we pay assessed value. But um, we're looking here to make a decision on whether or not we feel it's prudent for us to pursue this right. cul-de-sac. And if we do pursue it and purchase it, then we can rebuild that road to town standards. It's not worth our time putting any money in it right now because we could not even hardly get a uh, uh, blacktop machine around the corner. Um, where do you put the snow? Where do you put the snow in that cul-de-sac? Rick, you here? Yeah. Where do you put the snow in that cul-de-sac? On his land? I go in and I go out, and that's all I can do with it. It's a half a path. It's why it's the most miserable cul-de-sac in this town. It's so tight. I think you guys should give it to us. Maybe you will. The, the limbs of the tree <laughs> slap the windows and the mirrors when I go through here. Okay. Just one more comment. I thought years ago, and you probably may remember a bill, um, because it goes back to way long ago, that roads needed to be brought up to specs of the town before the town would take them over. And that was typically in the case of a county giving a road to us, and that was a case like Lake Avenue, okay. uh, where they turned a road over to us. That road was repaired first to standards, which is now since long gone, right, Shirley? So Lake that, Avenue. So that, that rule doesn't apply to I don't personal. believe it does, but we could find out from our attorney. I mean, if you want us to, uh, first pursue this with our attorney to be sure we're on the right path we can do that but he's only selling that little outlot in the middle not the road it's itself, not the road itself. That doesn't have a black top on it there's no black top on the center where the trees are growing that's what he's selling just oh the just little the center. yellow just center. the, yellow. Just the little, right. little yellow oh. center <laughs> he owns that it's considered an outlot all right I'm you, I thought we were purchasing the whole no, black no, top and the whole works. Oh. Okay. The road, the road is ours. Okay. All right, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to pursue negotiations to purchase Balsam Circle. Okay. Motion okay. by Kathy, second. second by Dan, I believe. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify saying aye. 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 I'm not any opposed. No opposed. Okay, item 10 uh, is uh, discuss drafting policy to have consistent enforcement of regulations of maintenance lawns in the town as required by ordinance uh, 52 zoning, 52.3 provision, general provisions, K, yard regulations. We have a regulation that says uh, properties must maintain their lawn when they get to eight inches high. I've had several cases where citizens reported to us uh, we took the information to the PD. Uh, this general process, Dave, that was in place prior to uh, so drink wine's policy was to give the property owner 30 days to come in compliance. Those 30 days typically went bye-bye and then we had another 15 day notice before you're gonna get a ticket. So now we got pretty much all summer gone and now the grass went from eight inches up to in good weather to whatever we continue to get our eyesore, so it was my suggestion that we cut the initial time frame down to two weeks, 15 days. We need to find out who the owner is. A lot of the times uh, it may be an abandoned property and we have difficulty finding the owner, which in one place we took us several weeks to be able to identify the actual bank that owned it, but once we did get in contact with them, they were relatively reasonable in, in taking action. But if we cut our time frame down to 15 weeks, 15 days, excuse me, 
and then one more week to come into the final before we issue it. I think we would keep our citizens a lot more happier when we see some of these properties that have been left behind and are just going to to pot. So that would be policy only. It would be a direction to the PD to follow up. And Bill, you had a comment? Yeah, yes. Uh, so so well, let's just think in some subdivisions they have natural areas. that That's not considered it. And, and some right. people own two lots and don't mow the other lot, although it's a combined lot. Uh, so, so how do we distinguish? So it's combined that? on one property? Yes. So both lots have to be mowed? I think it's a primary residence is what we're, we've been yeah, doing. Yeah. Okay, but you know, how do I know what to mow? Well, you, really? got, you got something like that? Yes. Buy some goats. Can't have farm animals in residence. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I had some questions too. Yeah, go ahead. I was asking Sergeant Jane Coyne earlier about um, what is the intent here? Is it to develop a policy that pertain just to this portion of this ordinance, or are we intending to develop a policy that the police department would use to enforce any violation of any ordinance? And with that in mind, I'm thinking this item perhaps should go to committee level and discussed with the police department, further develop a policy that actually be sitting here in front of us instead of discussing that maybe we should have a policy in place because all of our other policies are in written format and then bring a policy back here that we would actually have to read in advance and to be approving. So having said that, I'll make a motion that we send this to the Public Safety Committee. I'll second it. Well, Sorry. Kathy, second by. Because <laughs> you're not on this Public Safety Committee. <laughs> second by Patty to uh, move to Public Safety for their review. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I'm an aye. Motion is carried. Unanimous. And now we have three items. I was going to say. Okay, we're good at it. We have a uh, item 11, resolution 2013-32, amending our 2013 budget to increase computer support expense line to allow for repairs for our server to fix the email. I think if you read the comment that Judy put on here, actually, our staff has to log into a another person's server to get our emails which takes time uh, we need to bring it back in house where it belongs but we would be over budget and therefore that's why the resolution has been presented so anybody have comments on it you you say over budget or just a line item the line item so it's not really over budget we're going to move well, the line wrong. item's already over budget <laughs> because of all of the computer problems we've had this year, and this would put us way over. Our budget is not over. I mean, our, our number that we're at, but this is, it's, it's working right now. I mean, if you call it that. Um, but I did not want to just tell our computer people to do another $1,100 worth of work and $700 worth of equipment without board approval. We do have emails right now. We are going through Infotex online web-based emails. I make a motion to approve resolution 2013-32. Motion by Bill, second by Dan. And for discussion, long and short, I think our, our emails need to reside on our server so we have control over it. We have proper backups on our server most of the time, anyway. As though we, as we did have problems with the ones once a while ago. Uh, any further discussions? Hearing none, all in favor say goodbye to say an aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. <laughs> Item 12, resolution 2000. 1331 amending the 2013 budget increase PD capital purchases the amount to purchase one new laptop computer for a squad 
and it costs approximately $4,500 at the resolution in front of you. That would take care of an immediate need, but the rest of the needs need to be addressed at our next year's budget. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve resolution 2013-31 as presented. Seconded by? I will second it. Patty, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 13, uh, let's see, did we have something on that in auxiliary papers? Yeah, just that next question, Okay. Uh, 13, approved Bill of Danny Kara Davis attending uh, Tuesday review, reviews meeting in Wapaka at a cost of approximately $22.60. Plus per diems. Plus per diems, excuse me. I make a motion to approve Bill Glendening and Carol Davis to attend the Choose to Reuse meeting in Rebecca. I'll second. If I may just say something, and I don't know this. Uh, I will uh, I have a motion to second and now discussion. Thank you. I will just tell you the alphabet soup of this. This is the uh, Paul Conference of the NEWMGC slash WC. SWMA. It's what it is, is it's a conference of all the landfill organizations with the DNR. They meet. And uh, we presented one uh, to it when it was in Wisconsin Rapids to the RPRU units, which is the responsible units. And this here is the state conference on it. And we have put together a half hour PowerPoint presentation with Carol Davis. All right, any further discussion? It's a good program. Need to continue on with anybody uh, on the board have anything else? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. I'm an aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Unanimous. Uh, 14, approve Bill Clendenning and Fatty Lumpy Attention Airport Operation and Land Use Seminar. And that is going to be in Wisconsin Rapids, September 25th and 6th. Uh, cost uh, per diem only. Registration. Yeah, registration is 55 each. Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to approve the training and convention request for Bill and Patty and for the airport operations and land use seminar. I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a good thing to go to. Okay, discuss funding on town line road construction in the excess of the $500,000 already approved to be funded by the loans. And uh, we provided a document that we kind of went through and tried to bet, figure out our best scenario for the financing. And Judy, you want to take a little bit of lead on it? Sure. And, and uh, there, Rick, do we know the uh, time tomorrow is the meeting? Two o'clock tomorrow at Saratoga? Jewel's office. Jewel's office in Wisconsin Rapids. There's a pre construction meeting. We got notice just now, so if anybody's available for that, um, go ahead. Um, these are, this is the last page of your uh, revenue sheets that you have. Um, Kathy found an error. Um, Okay, the town line road project would be $901,774. We do have a loan approved by the board and approved by the local government, um, a five-year loan for $500,000. Uh, that leaves us $401,774 left to finance. There'll be approximately 190,000 left of the road construction budget for the year, which brings us down to 211,307 or 774,000 that we need to pay for the town line road project. So, if we take out a one-year loan at this time, that for that 211,000 that would make our, our payment due in 2014. Our other loans are paid off. That would be our only loan payment, um, which would keep tax levy-wise as far as um, adding to the levy very, very similar. Yeah. 
Um, we are already approved for the grant and our share of the grant for the Town Line Road would be 316697 that we would be getting back from the state. So the, but I don't know when we're going to get that back. Um, sometimes the state works fine. Next time, actually I, I just received within the last two weeks a final statement from them on the rebuild of 48th Street and the bridge here. And that was prior to 2007 when I started. And so, you know, I'm not guaranteeing that the state is going to have the money back to us this year, but I would assume that with a grant we should have it back next year. So when we get that back, we would have that to pay off, make our loan payment, and we also would be putting 104000 back into our general fund. So what little interest we would pay on that one year time frame, and actually we could pay it off before we before it's due and save interest. But all of our, everything is covered. Um, I did a rough estimate of end of the year expenses and end of the year revenue, which is what your spreadsheets are. And the new one that I just gave you, that final sheet, um, I, have, I had a slight mistake in there. And the sheets that I've given you said that we would have about 185,500 would be our deficit in our 2013 budget um, with our end of the year estimate. Uh, that actually is about 153,000. So at the beginning of 2013, our general fund was 805,000. If we take that 153,000 of this year's budget, which I'm kind of getting into the next agenda item, um, but that 153,000, that would be what we've spent on the purchases of the truck for the public works, um, a lot of our unexpected stuff that has come up. Furnaces. The furnaces, uh, the repairs to the fire trucks. Um, I did just get a $11,000 bill on, on one of the repairs to the fire trucks. That isn't included in this even yet, because um, it hasn't been paid, so it wasn't in, in these amounts. Um, but anyway, so if that amount, that 153000 or whatever our deficit, comes from our general fund, out of that 805000 that puts us at about 651 right around 651 in our general fund. Which should be a sufficient amount to start the year with. Right. But then, yeah, but then we go into where we're going to add that extra 100000 back in when we get the money from the state. So we're, we're, our general fund is going to fluctuate a little bit, um, but we're still sitting at a, a, a nice number for them. And that's primarily the reason why the general fund stays in that minimum of $500,000 is because these unexpected events come in that we need to fund and then we can op still continue to operate because we don't get most of our shared revenues, Chris, until when? Next month? November. Yeah. November. So, I mean, our two hundred and sixty or seventy thousand dollars worth of state money really doesn't come to us until it's almost the end of the year. So that's why we do need to carry a, a surplus to start the year out. Is otherwise we would be having to do short-term loan borrowing, and that's not a good practice. So, so what do you need on fifteen and sixteen to kind of go together? Yeah, they do. They do. So, um, we need on 15, we need a motion to, well, using my numbers to take out the one year loan from a local bank for the 211,774. That's to be the motion. That funds the balance of what we need with the $500,000 loan we've already secured. And it's very. It's what we've discussed in previous yeah. meetings. We talked about funding. So we just need to. I'll make a motion that we uh, take out a one year loan for $211,774.65 for 
Town Line Road for Town Line Road project. I'll second that. Second, uh, motion Dan, second Kathy. Further discussions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I'm an aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. So, again, on 16, we want to review the year in budget estimates. This cost all to fund the overage of the budget due to unexpected expenses. Um, so there we're at the point where I'm saying we're, we're roughly 153,000 that we will be more expenses than revenue. It's, it's an estimate. Um, if you choose to just have it come from the general fund, I will do a resolution for our next meeting um, for that. Mm -hmm. If Otherwise, the other option is you get to need to make a motion to take out a loan for the balance again. I'll make a motion to take it out of the general. I would second that. Motion bill seconded to by Dan to take the remaining uh, expense needed out of the general fund. Any further discussion? Yeah, are we in all, in all departments um, are kind of aware that we're over and I know we're getting um, Everybody is is under the um, need the supervisor signatures for for expenditures two hundred dollars. Yeah, anything it, outside of general maintenance right. and regular. And that goes through the end of the year. Right. Any other comments? Hearing none. All in favor, say five and say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Item 17 is uh, discuss the uh, disbursement vouchers. Any questions? Hearing nothing on the vouchers, uh, move to item 18. Operator permits. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the one-year operator license applications for Melanie Gallick, Angela Klisch, Curia Malcolm, Jerry Michelson, and Carrie Nicolay as presented, and to approve a one-year license with contingent with a six-month review for Stephen Gallick upon the recommendation of the police department. Second. Motion, Kathy, seconded by Bill. Any other discussion? If you're not all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. I'm an aye. Opposed? 19 uh, reports from committees. Move to uh, Public Works. Rick, anything going on? Uh, we have a large pile of brush. Uh, did we get a con uh, in contact with that uh, grinder yet? Are they uh, coming to get it? Okay. So we have a party that is going to come in and grind all the brush that we picked up, which was pretty large or people deposited, and it's going to be no cost to the town. So they'll take it off our site and, and uh, turn it into chips or whatever. Are they going to chip it for the town, or are they taking the whole thing? No, they're taking it and using it in boiler fuel, I believe. Okay. I noticed that they're still bringing in. Yeah. And uh, you'll probably get some choose the roofs too. Uh. Yeah. So, um, what are we going to do if they we get it all cleaned up and all of a sudden we turn around and see some more? Well, then we we'll chip it ourselves yeah. because okay. we have to, we have to get out on the road sometime with the chipper again this this fall when they get a little more time and start picking up some stuff. There are some other stuff that was just pushed off the road that we need to grind up ourselves and. We'll have a large pile of chips for these citizens again by, by the time we get in. But this pile for us to chip, that would have been immense. It's pretty big. Land Commission. Patty. Okay. Um, we had two land use permits were issued and one was tabled. We discussed the, we discussed the proposed um, changes to the 52 3k yard regulations for the side and rear yard regarding the encroachments we approved that to come back to the legislative 
committee as um, as written. And then um, we discussed the regulating the domestic fowl, and it was decided that a rough draft would be written and then reviewed by the commission um, with our suggestions. And then um, other public input, the commission will be um, reviewing on the next agenda, cell towers, outdoor wood burning furnaces, and um, discussing how we could have a better reporting system to the town board on updated issues that may come up, um, utilizing um, statistics and things that are occurring in the town just to keep everyone updated. Thank you. Any questions? Bill Airport <coughs> Commission. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the Southwood County Airport Commission met uh, at 4.30 on September 5th, 2013 at the Turnable Building in Alexander Field. The updates on the timber sale is there's two bids were received for, for and which new page was a favorable bid. The first cutting will begin, well, it began yesterday, Monday, and uh, on approach end of runway 20 with a completion date of August, uh, October 1st, 2013. And one of the remaining areas not needing access to private property will be completed March 1st, 2014. And the remainder of it will be all completed and done where they need private access on September 1st, 2014. Um, the letters have went out to the people that live on First Street in which that entire hedge roll inside the fence will be cut down. And, uh, those people looking out of their homes on First Street will have a new look. Uh, Tri-motor event, uh, estimated attendance was three to 4,000 people for the five-day event, which began August 29th and ended September 2nd. There were 38 flights that the Tri-motor uh, aircraft did. Don't have a number of the number of passengers, but but it was roughly $700 a trip that it that was made at, at that. The breakfast and VP uh, banquet, VIP banquet, and the American Legion lunch and the hangar dance, when it was well attended. Uh, for the month, there was 183 aircraft for August of 2013 and 253 for August of 2012. And year to date, we've had 1,100 airplanes land at uh, Alexander Field, and last year we had, at this time, uh, 1,240. Wood County has budgeted $45,000 for each of the two airports, that's Wisconsin Rapids and Marshfield. 45,000 or 4,500? 4,500. <laughs> <laughs> that's on TV, Lance. <laughs> $4,500 for each of the two airports, which is Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids. Just a little dust player. Yeah. The, the next meeting uh, is October 3rd at 4.30 p.m. And anyone's welcome to attend it. We average about eight members, eight of the public come to it a year in the, at each meeting. And um, the agendas are sent out to 32 different people. And if you want an agenda, you can let me know or Patty uh, Lumby, who is also the alternate commissioner. I don't know if you had anything else to add. He was at it. Uh, oh, with the trees that are being um, cut down along First Street, we are going to be looking at um, replanting a lower growing type of shrubbery there, too. So it's not going to be just clear cut. You have to talk to Mitzi by chance on their that was program. Mentioned, right? Yeah, yes, that yes, mentioned. that's been mentioned. So. Mm -hmm. Anybody got any questions? That's it. Any questions? Bill, I have one. Did you get up on the plane right? No, I didn't. I, I did not. You wanted to keep your feet in the ground? Yes, the mayor did. I did. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, and we'll turn to Patty again for public building report. Um, we did not meet, but we I we are um, working on getting estimates for the repairs that um, with our last July meeting that needed repair of the buildings, the town garage, the municipal building, and the fire department. So we're getting 
numbers for the budgets so that we can get things repaired. Okay. Any questions? We do have some issues with some of our buildings. Uh, we're starting to see some fascia starting to get weak on the fire station building and and uh, possibly a roof. So I guess you can own buildings without expecting that maintenance at some point in time. So we'll have that and those will become a budgetary item. Uh, uh, we had, Kat, Patty and I briefly talked about developing a uh, a capital improvement plan that would go out five years or more uh, to try to stabilize, <coughs> to help stabilize the budget so the budget can be used every year in a matter that would help us support the most appropriate items first and then move down the list to, to fix the other things. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Cycling solid waste bill. Well, I want everybody to remember that on September 14th, this coming Saturday, we're having our Choose to Reuse. I want to thank the newspaper, Daily Tribune, for having an article in there today, and also the Public Works for cleaning out the building and getting it ready. So, a lot of items. I uh, have stuff in a storage unit that um, people <laughs> had to drop off before they left. And lots of items. I'm not going to name them because the crowd will come over to my house first. Please come and don't forget the uh, water ski show. Well, I don't think that's what it's called, but... A water ski attempt for a world record. World yes. record. Look at Hunter. Pyramid. World. 900 horse motor. Right? 300 horsepower. Yeah, 900 horsepower. We're going to start setting up at 7 a.m. that morning. They'll have safety meetings with their people starting about 8 o'clock. He was all the teams about nine. Hope to have the first attempt on the water. Like Kathy said, around 10 at the latest. Uh, and then they'll continue from there. They're going to shoot for 60 people. If they're successful there, they'll try 72 people. That's about two miles of ropes in every attempt. One boat? One boat. One boat. Three? No, 300 horsepower. 900 total horsepower. 300 horsepower. Mm -hmm. I'll try Hope it can stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, if not, we will then move to uh, supervisor comments yeah, or board comments. Chris, anything today? No, sir. <laughs> Kathy? No, sir. Judy? No, sir. Bill? No, sir. Man. Boy, am I getting treated nice tonight, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. Come on, Dad. No, I can't. Jasmine, me, get me. Come on. No, I had to. All right. First thing um, regarding that fire on Saturday, uh, thank, special thanks to Arnie. He did spend all day down there with us. Also, um, whenever somebody came back or whatever, made sure they had something to eat, drink, and uh, clean up. Clean up was, uh, um, it was a mess, and uh, he was right in there with us. So thank you, everybody. Appreciate that. Um, I did have a good uh, conversation today with Rick Martin again from, uh, for the Reggie, um, the county did approve um, the uh, $50,000 in funds, but 19.5 of us will go to Heart of Wisconsin and 31.5 will be going toward the uh, Reggie project. Um, they are moving, moving forward on it and things seem to be progressing nicely. Um, he's going to keep, keep us updated as things come along. So they're really excited. They have had some very good, uh, Discussions with area businesses who are um, in supporting it and, and want to help out where they can. Um, we also uh, met with the YMCA um, regarding they are pursuing the, uh, I guess it would be called the Aquatic Center. Um, they did uh, visit three different um, communities who have these aquatic centers and uh, they're trying, trying to see in which direction this area wants to go. It's kind of a multi-community uh, effort between uh, Port, Grand Rapids, uh, and obviously the city. So um, they they like this like what direction that's going. Um, other than that, that's about it. Okay, Eddie. No, sir. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> they need one. Well, I do. And. Uh, this, this afternoon.
afternoon, uh, the Fire Chief Don Bone and I and the State Fire Marshal and the State Building Inspector met with our attorney, Dan Wood, uh, to discuss actions on a commercial property. Uh, attorney Wood commended uh, Chief Bone in the process. Uh, we will be setting up an additional meeting with the party, which will be scheduled very soon. So I just want an update the board so you're aware of, of an action that we're involved in. Motion to adjourn? I'll second. Okay. Anybody have discussion? Oh, here, not all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Mm -hmm.